This lesson is for the filters class and we're going to be looking at the crosshatch filter. Here is my layout that I made utilizing this filter and I love that there's nothing on here but what I didn't make in Photoshop Elements. It shows that you can make really cool layouts without lots of um, kits and elements and things on your page. I, I love scrapping this way. Um, we're going to dissect this a little bit to show you some of the techniques I did that I came up with when I was trying to be creative on this layout. If you scroll in you're going to see the crosshatch filter a little bit better. It's down here on this section in here and there is <laughs> oh goodness sorry I didn't mean to sneeze in your ear <laughs> there is um, more of the crosshatch that can be seen in this area on the actual photo and I actually put some up here also there's one setting here and there's some in the sky so it's gradually going down from uh, different variations of the crosshatch into the original photo. So um, let's, I got a lot of layers here I could show you. Let's go back and look at what I've done here. I'm trying to make all these invisible. Here is the original photo. Now um, I wanted uh, to downplay some of the brightness in this green in the front and I utilize the crosshatch filter in order to do that and um, that's what some of these layers are up in here but I'm going to go through my steps and show you that once again. I took the rectangular marquee tool and I upped my feathering I think I started down here somewhere around 39 pixels I just did something random and um, I chose an area down here and went beyond um, the edge of my photo because I, d I wanted to include most of my photo in it but then up here on this area it's going to be uh, feathered and faded so the crosshatch um, is not going to uh, be so prominent and it's going to blend into the photo more and then I hit control J on my keyboard and you can see over here made a new layer with my selection and there it is and that's the layer we're going to be working on first with the crosshatch filter. The crosshatch filter can be found under brush strokes and it does bring up the filter gallery. And I'm just going to zoom in here so you can see better what is happening with this filter and I have absolutely no idea what settings I applied. Um, this is These are the settings I applied um, in my second step where I upped um, the effect and you can see that I have my sliders all more to the right. Um, these This is the setting well, that I applied on the area that was all the way down here and all the way up here at the top of my layout. Um, and uh, but for this initially um, these were all down much more and just like um, most any of these filters there is no right or wrong um, what you choose you just move it around and observe the preview just as we've seen in the other lessons um, and choose what you like and then click OK. Now you can see that this um, looks really cool. It doesn't look really cool from a distance but um, it will uh, be visible when I print it and you can see how it now blends out into the photo. I'm going to make the photo come back on 
and um, but that didn't really help me because those flowers were still so bright so that's where these adjustment layers you are seeing in here came into play I went ahead and made a uh, new adjustment layer for hue and saturation and I took it down by about 20 you can see that it now is applied to the whole layout but I don't want that I just want it applied to this new section so I hit control G to group this one with this new layer here and now you can see before and after how it really took the focus off of those bright leaves in the front and put the focus back on the middle of the photo where all the beautiful uh, blue ocean is located and I actually did that twice I went ahead and um, I upped my feather selection I did that at the top also the same thing I did at the top uh, as I just did here but then I grabbed I upped my feather and I grabbed even a smaller selection down here went back to my original layer control J to put that on a new layer and upped it to the top I just ran the same filter I had run before and only this time when I added my hue and saturation adjustment I took it more than just 20 so it was gradually fading out and control G to group it to that layer and so that is how I gradually faded this out um, this is a little bit strong uh, cross hatching I think compared to my first one but it still works so that's what I did to get those layers and I'm going to go ahead and delete those that we just made because I already have them right here and here are is the first set you can see how it blends in there fairly nicely and then the next set on top of that and I lowered the opacity even more on that blended set and then I did it again up here at the top but I only did it once at the top I didn't since so it need, didn't need I don't, maybe I did it twice nope that's that was my circles we can go ahead and put them back on I made that with a dotted brush and a layer style um, and so that's what I did to uh, give an effect at the top and at the bottom gradually going in and also gradually decreasing the uh, saturation so that um, it wasn't so prominent um, then the next step I did was to uh, duplicate my original photo and I'm not going to do this at that this time um, we're going to go ahead and take all these off uh, because that was quite a bit of work but I took this original one and I duplicated it and I resized it it was much longer than my canvas and I actually duplicated it twice um, and resized it and repositioned it twice until I had um, you see this doesn't look very good especially down here but I was looking at the section up here and just the section down here and trying to find something that looked good and worked with the rest of the photo that I merged those two layers I had one that I positioned where it looked good at the top and then I had one where I positioned it to where it looked good at the bottom and then I merged the two layers um, and then I went ahead and cut out some of the middle the reason I did that and you know I could have cut out even more if I wanted to um, but the reason I I did that was because when you're running the filters it applies to uh, it takes longer 
for the filter to run um, the more pixels there are. Uh, so it runs really fast on this really small selection but when I was trying to run it on a full page it was taking forever for the preview to come up and I opted out and just took out some of the middle pixels that were not there that I didn't need. Um, and uh, this is just then a, the layer that I created and I ran this filter on it and I upped the strength of the uh, filter. So, and I also uh, decreased the opacity on it because see it doesn't look good as really bright here. It takes away the effect of the other layers so I added a saturation layer there and then this ended up to be my final layout. So those were some techniques that I utilized in order to uh, make this layout and um, you can use these or you can uh, use some of them from other tutorials or you can uh, come up with your own and be creative. Uh, but I want you to really take time, just don't do this lesson and apply it to a photo and say I'm done. Take time to really make a layout and preserve a memory with it. Um, and uh, I want to see uh, what you come up with because it just might inspire me for my next layout.